welcome to the Convex Conversation with me, broadcaster Helen Fosbury. This week, I'm in Camden in North London with a very special young lady I've been following on Instagram for quite a while. Betsy Rose Powley is 10 years old, so our youngest podcast guest by a long stretch. Betsy has e-wing sarcoma, a rare form of cancer, and has just finished 14 gruelling rounds of chemotherapy. She's now having radiotherapy five times a week. She's under incredible doctors and nurses at the world-famous Royal Marsden Hospital and undergoing treatment at the moment at UCLH in London. And she shared her journey with tens of thousands of people on social media, giving regular updates like this. Hi, everyone. So <laughs> um, I had my blood come back um, earlier and um, they was all good and my kidneys, the number went down um so that's really good but now i'm finished off chemo no more chemos to be done and i'm around my friends now betsy's instagram films betsy with an i at the marsden are inspiring funny and optimistic and even on the toughest of days when things aren't going to plan or she's exhausted she always manages a smile and to find a positive I'm on my fluids now, um, and yeah, I don't think I don't think I've got any more chemo left for tonight. Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> um, but oh, today is just dragged on, and all this week I'm just a bit fed up now. It's like I just miss my, my sister, my dad, my brother, Frank. Oh, I just want to leave right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, there's just tomorrow and then the next day we go home. Woo. Not only is Betsy sharing her story to help others, she's been busy raising thousands of pounds to buy pyjamas for other poorly children. And today I'm catching up with her and her family post-radiotherapy treatment at Betsy. It's really Lovely to meet you. I've been following you for so long on Instagram. I actually feel like I know you. And I'm a little bit nervous because you are so professional on your Instagram that I'm not sure I'm going to be as good as you today. What do you reckon? <laughs> um, well, yeah, you've been doing it like a longer time than me. but <laughs> I think you've got potential to be a very good long term, very good television presenter. You're right. I've been doing that a very long time and I know you looked me up and had a look at what I've been up to. But you're so natural on your Instagram and it's been really interesting following your story, which is why I wanted to come today. Shall we start by hearing about how your day's been today and what you've been up to at the hospital? Um, yeah, it's been good today. Um, so today I went to the hospital and then I went in. they done all of their checks and all that. Then I went in the room, they made sure everything was in place, and then, yeah, they got started with the treatment. And then once we was done, we just came back. Can you describe what radiotherapy is like? Does it hurt at all? No, you don't feel like anything. It's just like you're laying there and then a machine just moves around you. And you're busy five days a week having that at the minute? Uh, Yeah. Well, I feel... Honestly, as I said, like I know you because I watch all your posts and I always think that you bring a little bit of ray of sunshine. It doesn't matter what's going on with your treatment. You always find a little bit of joy. How did you come up with the idea in the first place of sharing your story with all of us? Well, it started like on New Year's Eve. Um, and so I was in Pembury um, and we didn't think we was going to, like, come home that night and we would have had to, like, stay there another couple of days or something. And then the nurse came in and said, it's okay, but then um, before, like, probably five, ten minutes before that, my auntie called and said that, oh, I've set up an Instagram account for you and you can, like, show all the stuff that you do and all that. Ah, and did you like it straight away? Did you feel quite natural making little posts and updating everybody on what was going on? Uh, 
Yeah, I was like really excited to do it. And then at the start, like I was like, oh my God, what am I, what am I doing? Like, what am I saying? What am I saying? And then as like time went on, it was just like, I got the hang of it. And then I was just like, hi everyone. <laughs> oh, I like the way you say hi everyone. It, you always start off in that voice, don't you? Mm. And I like the way you always <laughs> throw your arms when you say hi, <laughs> hi everyone. I know we can't see that on the podcast, but it's always a lovely way to start. So you were talking about your journey and what was happening with your treatment, but do you find that sitting down and recording those posts and having lots of people start to follow you and send you messages has helped you find the last few months a little bit easier? Has it helped you? Yeah, it has like made me feel like good because there is some people who message saying like, oh, I'm going through this and all that. And I have to do like radiotherapy or chemo, whatever it is they have to do. Even like adults are messaging and saying, oh, um, like they go in and then they go, wait, Betsy's done this. And that means that I can do it. And like they've just messaged all saying that it was okay and all that. And that just makes me really happy. So really you're helping give other people some courage because I've seen you say, if I can go through this, then you can go through this. So it's really been helping people, hasn't it? Yeah. And do they write nice things to you, Betsy, wishing you well and telling you to stay strong and keep smiling? Yeah, there is a lot of people messaging, like all different types of things, like encouragement and all that. So, And that's also really nice. I hear from mum and dad that David Williams has been on your Instagram too. Yeah, he has. He even sent me a few books signed as well. Did he? So you're a big David Williams fan? Yeah. My children love him. What what do you like best about David Williams? Just he's really funny. <laughs> and you like Little Britain, don't you? Yeah. He was very funny on Little Britain, wasn't he? Yeah. Do you think you'd like to meet him one day? I would love to. Would you? Yeah. Which book is your favourite? Probably Codename Bananas. Oh, I've not read that one. Gangster Granny. What about Gangster Granny? Have you seen the film of that? I'm not really sure. That's a very good one. If you've not seen that, that's a good one to watch. I think I've read the book, but I'm not sure about the film. Wow. So how did he find you? Did he just randomly leave a message on your Instagram? Well, we like kind of messaged him like saying, oh, can you please follow? Like we would love it if you followed and all that. And then... Yeah, he followed and then we was like, oh my God, <laughs> like that. You must have been so excited. And also what has excited you is the number of followers now. I think you're up to more than 77,000, aren't you, on Instagram? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's like 77.1. And does that excite you when you get to the next, you know, the next 10,000 or whatever? Yeah, it really excites me. So for those people listening, Betsy, who haven't been following your story, can you tell us a bit about what happened to you and you know, how you found out you were poorly and, and what sort of treatment you've had to have? Tell us a bit about Betsy's story if we haven't been following your posts. It kind of started like when I was running about in school, I started running out of breath really quickly. And then um, I had quite a few days off of school. And then once I was asleep on the seti and then my mum heard like listened to my chest and she could hear like rattling so she took me to the nearest hospital and yeah they said that I've pulled a muscle and all of that and then it finally came out that I had Owen's coma and yeah so I started having chemo so I had nine rounds of chemo and then I had my operation and then I had five more chemos and then I now having six weeks of radiotherapy. You are only just 10 Betsy, you're so young. What was it like at that time? I mean I'm guessing that perhaps at that age you hadn't come across cancer in your life or any kind of diagnosis like that can you remember what it was like when you were told that you were quite poorly and you were going to need some difficult treatment well when I found out that I had Owen's coma me my mum and my dad just like burst into tears and then I think it was that night or the next night 
I had my first chemo and then I was just like, wait, this is fine. Like, is that what you saw when you had it? Is that the sort of attitude right from the beginning that this is going to be okay? Yeah. Yeah, it must have been a bit of a frightening time for your family as well. But I've met your family, I've met your sister, not your brother, I've met your sister today, Nancy. And you've obviously got a very strong family around you. So has everybody really pulled together? In the start, I think we was a bit like, oh my God, what's going to happen? And all like that. But then as time's gone on, we've got a lot like stronger and closer in that. Yeah, you've been incredible. And Ewing sarcoma, I've got to admit, I'd never heard of that. I know it's it's quite a rare form. And does that affect soft tissues and bones? And it moved things around a bit in your chest, didn't it? It was so big, it like collapsed my left lung. So that's a tumour collapsed your left lung. Yeah, yeah, and it pushed my heart to the other side of my body. And Gosh, and how did you feel at that point? Did you feel poorly in yourself? I was getting like really out of breath because mm. obviously like I only had one lung to work with and then I was getting a few pains now and then and then we went to the hospital. And, yeah. So after surgery, are things back in the right place and, and are you still relying on one lung now or, or is the other one still working? I'm not really sure but um, hopefully things are back in play. Oh, that's good. Betsy, I know you had... 14 rounds of chemotherapy and I know from friends of mine when you're a grown-up that that's not a very easy thing to go through sometimes it makes you feel a bit rubbish and not very well how did you cope with the chemo and and how did you get through that for like the first bit when I didn't really have the Instagram before that I was just a bit like not wanting to talk to anyone and like just feeling really like down in myself and then when I got the Instagram, I had like loads of like encouraging um, messages and all that. And then I was like starting to talk to like the play leaders and all that. And then I started to work my way up to like speaking to the other kids and that. And does that help when you can talk to other kids that are going through similar things to you? Yeah, it kind of does. Because um, like, you can tell them that it's fine and they can tell you that like it's okay because sometimes you meet kids who are like on their last round of chemo and you're on like your second or third or something and then yeah they just say like look I'm fine and like I'm almost done and almost completely well again. And do the nurses and doctors really help as well keep you going? Particularly perhaps if you're feeling sick or you're not you're not feeling good or your your platelets aren't right, are they very good at inspiring you to keep going and to keep strong? Yeah. Um they are really like inspiring because you hear a lot of nurses say like stories about like they went through something like that as a kid and that's why they wanted to become like a nurse and that and Gosh, you amazing. find that in like a lot of nurses so they've had personal experience that they can share with you yeah yeah now the other thing I'm sure was very difficult and you've talked a bit about on your Instagram but you're a lovely blonde with lots of lovely blonde hair and obviously through treatment you've lost your hair how was that Betsy and how have you how have you coped with that because you're so gorgeous you've got such a beautiful smile a beautiful face have you managed to get through that bit okay? Well, in the start, I was just like carried on wearing hats and all that, like not wanting to show um, my head. And then, yeah, like I've said about a lot of things, the Instagram just like made me want to like take off my hat and that. Yeah, and, and it'll grow back now, won't it? Perhaps after, after your radiotherapy's finished, I'm guessing. Well... My eyebrows and all that have already started to grow back. So I'm hoping my hair will grow back soon as well. One of the posts that I thought was amazing was when you finished the chemo. I felt, I felt, and I didn't even know you, but I felt so excited when you got to the 14th and you'd done and you went home and everything. Did you get to ring the bell at the hospital? Not on the last one because I still had radiotherapy because at that time I still had 
six weeks of radiotherapy to do. And yeah, so once I've finished all my radiotherapy and that and we've made sure that I haven't got to have anything else, then I can ring the bell. Fantastic. And how did you feel when you got to the end of the chemo? How excited were you that that part of your treatment was all done and you'd you'd made that? Well, I felt like a weight has been lifted. Like, oh, before I was like, oh, next one to go now, two more weeks and I've got to go back in again. Now I'm just like, I can stay home and all that. So... It perhaps sounds to me that the radiotherapy isn't as gruelling or isn't as doesn't make you feel as poorly as the chemotherapy did. Yeah, no, the chemotherapy just made your blood goes down and all that, and so does your. I think it's called neutrophils. Um, yeah, so you couldn't be with anyone poorly or that. You still you still can't in radiotherapy, but not as much. And there were some days, weren't there, when you couldn't have it because perhaps your blood wasn't right. So you must know quite a lot about the medical world now. There's community nurses that come around, um, change to plaster on your arm or port or whatever you have. And they come and take bloods as well. And then they take it to their hospital that they're going to. And then we get the bloods sent back to us and then... It depends on like whether the milestone says yes or no or wherever you're having it. Now, the other, I was going to say person, but he's not a person. Frank kept you going to tell us a bit about Frank. Yeah, Frank, my dog, every time I come home, he's there and then he just sticks his tongue out just and then starts like breathing and then when he breathes, it sounds like he's snoring. <laughs> so we're not sure if he's asleep, awake, or yeah. And yeah, he's just really funny. What sort of dog is he? He's a British bulldog. He's a fantastic looking British bulldog. And some days were you really looking forward to being able to get back to him as well? Did he play his part in keeping you positive because you were looking forward to going back to him? Yeah, he really did. Um, Frank did also have a brother, Bruno, so then there was Frank Bruno. <laughs> um, but sadly, in between treatment, he sadly like passed away. Oh, he was only young, wasn't he? Uh, yeah, he was one. That must have been sad. And did you manage to get home to see him? Yeah, in between like having chemo, they let us come home for like an hour to give him a little funeral. Oh, that must have been sad. Well, I'm, I'm glad you've still got Frank because he's been a massive source of strength. When you get back, when you've had treatment and you get back home, is the first thing you do go and give Frank a cuddle? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes he's asleep on the mat in the porch and then as soon as we pull up and open the door, he's he's still laying there asleep. But then as soon as I go, Frank, like that, he hears my voice and then he goes, and then he jumps up and then he <laughs> just starts wagging his tail. He sounds great. And did you have a bit of a party when you finished the chemo before the radiotherapy started? Did you have a bit of a the family bash or a party at home or some celebrations? Yeah, we had a little party at the local pub. And yeah, it was a surprise party. My dad and my sister planned it all. And so everyone who went, not everyone, but most of the people who I knew was there, like family and all that. That must have been great fun. Now, you mentioned your sister there, Nancy. As well as going through all this treatment, you've been fundraising and you've been raising a lot of money and you've been doing something with pyjamas. So with Nancy, your sister. So tell me about your fundraising and what you're up to with pyjamas. So when it all started... I was in Marsden having my treatment, but then I didn't want to like take my top off to for them to get to my line to put the chemo in. So my dad just started cutting up my pajamas to get the what the nurses call wigglies out. <laughs> um, and then in the end, I was just like, no, I don't want to keep on cutting up my pajamas. Like I was getting 
sad that I couldn't keep one pair of normal pyjamas. So I just ended up saying to him, can't you like buy me a special pair or even I'll make a special pair um, myself. And because then- your pyjamas, your soft pyjamas make you smile, don't they? You've talked about that on your Instagram, that when you've got a nice soft pair on, it just made you feel better, didn't it? Yeah. So was it quite hard then when Dad was chopping up and cutting them all up? Yeah, because I've had a lot of pyjamas that I've gone through in the milestone. So, yeah, I was getting quite sad because I really wanted a normal pair of pyjamas because I wanted to feel like normal again, but then... What idea did you come up with when Dad was busy cutting up your pyjamas so you could get the chemo in? What were you thinking you might be able to do and how did you start the fundraising? Well, my dad was cutting up my pyjamas, but I was thinking of making it like the cut, but just like more professional and better. And also it's not just for pick lines because what I've got is a is called a pick line. Loads of people have like ports and they're on the chest and loads of different things. And yeah, so it's for like, all of those things. So did you think then maybe that you could design your own that would be suitable for children who aren't very well and who are having treatment in hospital? Yeah. So basically what they like actually are is pyjamas but with a twist to make just going through that just a bit more easier, making it less hard than it has to be. And are you going to sell these, Betsy? Um, yes. How are you going to do that? Well, we've got a little website. So the name of the brand is Bamware. It stands for Betsy and Monkey because Monkey's my teddy and he's been with me the whole way along and just he's always been by my side and I've had him since I was a baby baby. He's been in bed at all times, hasn't he? If you've been in bed at hospital, then Monkey has been by your side, snuggled up with you. Yeah, he always has. Even doing radiotherapy, I'm allowed to hold him at the top, so I hold his feet. Oh, that's so lovely. Now, Nancy, your sister, who's a bit older than you, she's been helping with the pyjamas. What's she been up to? She's just been trying to, like, get the labels and all that, just... On point. (laughs) Wow. So as well as a bit of a social media star, you're an entrepreneur as well with your own business, which is really exciting. And I've brought you a little present today, Betsy, and I'm going to hand these pink lion pyjamas over to you. And don't you dare let your dad go anywhere near those with scissors because they're nice and soft. And do you know who's given those to you? Because I couldn't get them in time. The White Company have sent you those as a present because I couldn't get the ones I wanted quickly enough to bring you. So they sent those to my house on a motorbike. Thank you. you. You're very welcome. Do you like them? Yeah. Can you describe them for our listeners? Pink with sleeping lions on them and very soft. Oh, Thank you. you're very welcome. They're very soft. And I'm thinking that when you're not having treatment, they'll be nice ones to have at home. But the fundraising bit. So you've raised, well, I know your target's £25,000 and I don't think you're that far off it. Tell me about the fundraising side and roughly how much you've raised so far and how that's going to help. So the fundraising is um, to go towards the pyjamas to help them get made and all that. And so the target is 25000 and I think we're like, 23,000 or something. And how have you raised that money? What sort of events have you organised? We've organised a fun day at our local pub. So we've had that and it's just a just giving thing on the Instagram and people have kindly donated. So you're still going through your radiotherapy, but once that's over... What's the kind of plan? Are you hoping that that's the end of the treatment and that normal life can carry on, Betsy? Hopefully, yeah. And how are you feeling in yourself these days? I'm feeling like a tiny bit tired from the radiotherapy, 
but they've already said that's normal. And yeah, I'm just feeling really good. Well, you're looking really well and I've been really excited to come and meet you and believe me, you haven't been a disappointment in any way, shape or form. I knew that I'd love chatting to you and I think you're a real inspiration and I hope you keep strong and you keep smiling and keep us posted with how all the radiotherapy is going and keep those positive films going because they live on Betsy and lots of people are going to benefit, lots of adults as well are going to benefit from that with you giving us such an honest view of what it's like and what the tough days are like and all the stories of how you got through those tough days. So you're going to keep it going and keep inspiring people, I hope. Yeah, I am definitely going to keep it going because it just makes me feel so good that I'm like letting people know that it's fine, that what they're going through, it don't hurt, nothing bad happens and that. And what about just a final thought for mum, dad, Nancy, Sid and Frank? A little message for how they've kept you going and been by your side through all this time. Just a thank you. Um. <laughs> <laughs> You've got an ace family, haven't you, hey? Um, yeah, I have. Yeah, they've They're been by just... your side the whole time. Yeah. Just want to say thank you to them not giving up with that. And all those nice nurses and doctors, hey, you've been looked after well, huh? Yeah, they're really nice. So before I go, we'll finish our podcast now. But before I go, maybe we can record a little message together about our podcast. And then we could put that out, couldn't we, when it when it goes out? Would that be fun? Yeah, definitely. Good. Well, you've been listening to the amazing Betsy Rose Powley, just 10 years old, sharing her cancer journey every step of the way with more than 77,000 followers on Instagram, and now Betsy's going to become an entrepreneur with hopefully some fantastic soft pajamas that are going to make other sick children really smile. And then when they're having their lines or drips inserted, they won't have their parents chopping their pajamas to bits, which Betsy didn't really like. Please follow her, Betsy, that's B E T S I, Betsy at the Marsden, if you're not already doing so. Download and subscribe to our series at convex.podbean.com or search The Convex Conversation on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple and Google Podcasts, or wherever you listen to yours. Bye from me and... Bye from me.